Hello and welcome to the Build With Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a, a model kit and then a Lego set and to talk with all of you. I'm throwing the Bear Cave, the Lego, the Scythe, the Moat in the chat. If you're currently a subscriber, you can throw that back at me. If you're not a subscriber, hey, you can get it on the fun by just saying hi. I am pleased as punch to be wearing my Stardew Valley shirt because I'm not worried about a green screen. So I can wear this off green, this forest green or dark green. I, I forget the exactly what it is but i can wear this shirt it's a stardew on it that i got for free and i don't wear on streams because of the green screen um last is here hi last aristofan is here hello aristofan uh not union joe or not you why union joe why did i say that not non-unique guy says hey first time checking out your stream well welcome happy to have you here of course harold did host the stream we appreciate that harold um so for for non um oh and we've got a host from Sazabi88. Uh, That's very nice as well. Uh, thank you for that. Um, Return of the King. Sazabi is here. Welcome, welcome. Happy to have you here. Um, yeah, uh, we're going to get started with the stream proper in a moment or two. Uh, we always gave it a few minutes for people to come in. So people like see a notification. They're finishing up another stream or they're just like, oh, that's right. Pat streams at 9 p.m. It has been a bit, Sazabi. Happy to have you. You're here for the end of one model kit uh, build and the start of a Lego set. Um, uh, yeah, and we'll talk a bit about this in a moment or two. Um, we're just, you know, we're, we're give folks a chance to come in, hang out. Um, it's been... Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a couple days since our last stream. Of course, Saturday was last stream. And uh, if you haven't been on stream in a bit or if you missed last week, uh, I just was trying things out. And I'm pretty pleased where we ended up. I've been having some issues with getting my green screen stuff to work the chroma to work kind of how I want it to do. Um, uh, I've been having some issues with that and kind of trying to minimize and simplify because I will be moving soon uh, at the end of this month and I don't know if I'm going to be able to have a green screen set up or if I'm going to be able to have uh, a bunch of lights to make the chroma work. Uh, so now I'm experimenting with kind of doing more frames and doing more borders and we'll go into that. Sazabi says that they've built uh, a kit since then. Well, good. Happy, happy to hear that. Um, but yeah, we're also, we're doing 16 by 9 now. We're trying 16 by 9 out. Um, going full widescreen with our camera. Now, by uh, forcing our webcams to be 16 by 9, we do lose some of that digital zoom. When I was going 4 by 3, we could really zoom in there. So we've lost a little bit of that. I've had to physically move the camera down, but I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. And it does mean that we can have this amount of lighting with just a lamp that's on my monitor stand, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, I'm going to go put a tweet out here that we started the build process uh, check my messages, make sure things are good there. Oh, yeah, we just got some nice people uh, saying nice things, which is helpful. You did the real grade new, the high grade Master Gundam. Ah, yes, uh, and the uh, Ultron Gundam. And, the uh, oh, the Vulculator. We did the Vulculator on stream. And, of course, we've, uh, uh, we have done the Ultron um, before. Uh, which is a fantastic kit. So what's this kit? You might be asking yourself. You're like, Pat, I wasn't here. I didn't see. What's up? Oh. Well, take a look at this weird friend. Get in here. And then you can see him there. Look at this weird friend. Uh, so this is the uh, Eldora Brute. It is based on... Uh, yes, it is, it is, uh, it is the four-legged variety... Of the uh, of the demon army, the devil army from G Gundam, uh, a thing that uh, I wanted to point out because we put the backpack on last at the end of last stream, and because we were wrapping things up, and I wanted to to, to finish up um, the backpack. I always like I, I love a good mobile suit backpack. Always have, always will. This one, the one I want to point out is that these are. If you look at them and you go like, "Hey, this backpack is designed." Are those legs? Yes. The idea is that this is like uh, a regular old... Oh, Jam just subscribed. Thank you so much, Jam. Let's hit the applause on the uh, on here. Uh, that's 30 months. Thank you so much, Jam, for your consistent support. Uh, it means a lot. I appreciate uh, that. 30 months is such a long time. Also, you're very good at keeping up with, uh, with Twitch Prime, and I appreciate that. 
uh, staying within that window. Um, uh, good on you, and thank you. Um, so the thing I want to point out is uh, these these are legs. The idea is that this kit is supposed to be like, oh, it's got two big legs, and it's just like a regular old mobile suit. Nope. B b legs fold up, and now it's got four legs. And that's somewhat terrifying. Uh, two and a half... Yeah, two and a half years, yeah. Um, uh, it also has the club rifle, which is from the uh, Devil Army kit. Uh, and so we can put that on. And then we're going to build the... I guess it's a tri... It's a quad... Hmm. That doesn't sound right. So a three prong is a trident, but this is a four prong. So is this a quad? Are we building a quadrant? Is this a quadrant? That seems wrong, right? That seems like I'm saying the wrong thing when I say quadrant. We're not built. Are we building a quad? Are we building a quadrant? I don't know. Anyway, let's actually build it. Uh, uh, it'd be a battle mace of some kind. Yeah, I mean. I don't know. It's uh, It's got the last of our stickers, and it's got... Uh, but yeah, it's got the four prong there, so I don't know. Um, uh, oh, you know, look, here's the thing. We don't say what we do. I'm trying not to say, how are you doing? Or, holding up okay? Or, how's it going? I'm trying not to say that. Um... Uh, I'm trying to say instead, I hope you're taking breath. I hope you're, you're taking time. I hope you're taking moments. Um, uh, realize that uh, for, for some people, it has been since uh, March that things have just not been right. For other people, it's been a very long time. It's not... Some people's trauma are not a 2020 product. Um, uh, I, I I appreciate the um, uh, the McElroy brothers uh, do a thing they for a few years of their podcast where they pick a theme for the year and that and then that be, eventually became the theme of like their tour merch and uh, it was jokingly there was a uh, 20 funny fill your laugh fill your life with laughter and love became that kind of it's a joke, but that was their theme in January. And they changed it because they were like, that doesn't feel it's that doesn't feel like 2020 is the year of laughter and love. Um, it doesn't 20. It's not 20 funny. And I can appreciate that. They were like, yeah, because uh, to a lot of folks, it's not uh, this isn't a new thing. Um, this is an ongoing thing. This has been a thing for a very long time. But there are other people who, um, who maybe through no fault of their own or because of their own ignorance and or blissful ignorance or avoidance of issues um, have been able to coast and 2020 might be someone's first hard year. And I'm not here to say like, oh, you should have been struggling this whole time because I'll say this. You know, 2019 was the start of my bad year, and it has continued into this year. But I was doing all right up until 2019. I was, like, coasting along pretty damn well, where, like, there were issues, there were systemic issues, and I was certainly, like, aware of them. But, like, oh, well, my spot in the queer spectrum is invisible, so it's not really an issue. And uh, I'm living comfortably in a cool city and I get to do cool things and be my authentic self. And I'm starting to discover who that authentic self is more and more with each day. And I'm comfortable and, uh, oh, I'm getting cool opportunities and stuff like that. Like, you know, I've been complacent. And it's been fairly easy to... Uh, you know, like, it took me a while into 2019 to recognize that I wasn't as okay as I would like to be. That um, being let go from my job and finding trouble finding new things and watching the support that I got at the beginning of the year kind of just, 
even out. You know, we, we, hit, we hit over 70 subs in January. Halfway through January, that momentum was going, and we were... Uh, we were almost at 80 subs, uh, and we had 30 to 50 viewers a stream, and it felt like, oh, this is a momentum shift, and I, I can do this while I figure out the next step, and I can, uh, this is going to work out, and uh, I, I can do this, and I'll find a full-time job, and as that hasn't happened, uh, it, uh, I, I didn't realize that I wasn't as okay as I thought I was. And uh, and then towards the end of 2019, I took a job that was, uh, it was full-time, but it was not going to be long-term. It was not, it was not like a long-term job. It was a commission or not commission gig, but it was, it was a contract gig that had an end date. And then that end date came sooner than anticipated which in some ways was incredibly demoralizing, but in other ways was for the best um, because it turns out that uh, I am not cut out for internet customer service. Now, maybe I am now. I was not at the end of last year. I was not mentally prepared to have people who need to vent their frustrations and do not think about humanity while they do it. I was not prepared for that. Uh, I'd like to think I could handle that job better now, um, but I don't, but I was not in a good spot at the end of last year because of that. And it took me a while to realize, oh, it's, it is this job, but it's not just this job. I need to figure some stuff out. And that's been helpful. Uh, as always, I am thrilled to be here, to be doing this work, to be with all of you. Uh, having uh, an outlet of this has been great. Uh, hello, Dirty. Uh, particularly, it has been great because um, in isolation... I have been in pretty deep isolation and having the opportunity to talk uh, to folks in chat and see familiar names uh, has been has been very helpful. Uh, I've been there. Those jobs can certainly be rough some days. Yeah, um, it was I was doing holiday customer support and there was a day where I was supposed to do live chat. And I woke up that day and I couldn't get out of bed that day. And it's been a long time since I wasn't able to get up and go. Because my, my basic plan was on those days was, the work days was, get up, you know, you're working from home, but shower, eat some food, get, get some breakfast cooking and just in time to clock in and start your work day. And then you're eating over the first few jobs. And it was, I was supposed to do customer service and live chat the day after uh, Thanksgiving, Black Friday. And you may remember that last year, uh, Thanksgiving was really late in the month. The last Thursday of the month, which is uh, American Thanksgiving. Uh, for, for our international friends was very late and so people were making deals and I, I don't think they were realizing how late in the month it was when they were making those deals and so people who had you know were frantic about the mistakes they had made and needed things changed and it was I was I was definitely like it I hadn't been paying attention to how I was feeling. And so that's the little bit of a message I can give here. I mean, I'm only, a, I'm only a, a uh, I'll like this. I'm not an expert in mental health. I'm not even an expert in my own mental health. I can only tell you to listen to, to your body and yourself, to 
uh, do uh, to engage with with your with who you are and check in with yourself to think about things, um, especially uh, this year, which has just been awful for people. Uh, and uh, the last past few months have been really rough for some people. So uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Um, you know, check in with your friends. And when I say check in with your friends, that doesn't mean add additional labor to marginalized folks that you know. When we say check in with your friends, we don't mean send a text message of what can I do to help to your black acquaintance. If I can be fucking specific on that shit. Now, I say this because that is things that I have heard directly from friends of mine, actual honest friends of mine, and not former co-workers who I know kind of well and have really kept in touch with, that that is not, that, so, that a lot of that is not helpful. But you, if you got true blue friends, if you got like real for real, close knit, you know, family friends, you can check in on them. And it doesn't have to be, as I said, I don't like, how are you holding up? How are you doing? I would just say, it's Monday, and I was thinking about you. And if you're the kind of friend that uses terms of endearment, you can say like, hey, just want you to know that I'm thinking about you, and I love you. Like, I think that's great. But also, your mileage may vary. You may have already done this work. You may continue to do this work. You may have people that you check in on constantly. I'm not a check-in kind of person. Um, the the most common beginnings of text threads, uh, text message threads, are, hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. And that's from other people. Because I don't do a lot of check-ins with folks. That's not my style. It's not how I operate. Doesn't mean I don't care. It's just I am not one. I am generally the person that people reach out to. It's just how I am. Uh, not opposed to it. It's just how I am. Anyway, let's talk about this kit because we finished our quadrant and we put it on there and we have our uh, club that is also a a rifle you can hold like that but you can also hold it like a, 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 there if you'd like you can take this off here and we can change it like that or I think you use the other hand for that but we'll keep it like this because why not and now we got a weird four-legged mobile suit um I mentioned this on Twitter today speaking of the world and what's been going on with it, and how people are feeling or not feeling, depending, um, is that uh, some bullshit uh, statues that should be taken down anyway have been getting pulled down, and sometimes people are saying, this is a thing we can do, so let's do it, uh, which is great. Um, and there's always jokes about that, like, oh, they should put this there they should put that there and you know somebody's photoshops an evangelion and then today there was a thing going around uh hello washable uh glad to, glad to have you back welcome washable markers happy to have you here we've uh we have finished our eldora brute and i'm gonna uh switch over uh to our lego build in just a second here uh but yeah this is the brute the brute has been built the weapons are done uh, and then we can uh, move on to uh, our Lego and we can do some knolling while I talk about how replacing the Statue of Liberty with a Gundam is a fun joke. Look, the uh, putting the RX-78, yeah, that's fun. It, it, it's, it is a fun bit of business. The thing that I will say, because I am often a stick in the mud, is... Sometimes I feel like people, like Gundam, aesthetically, and kinda, 
leave it at that. And I get it. If you if you came up on the SD, the Chibi Gundam series, if you came up on the uh, oh, this is the uh, this is the Empire Dragon, by the way, from Ninja Go. Because if there's one thing Ninja Go is very good at, it's making cool ass dragons, neon cool ass dragons that I want to build. Uh, and we got some some ninjas. Got some Tron ass looking dragon that we're gonna put together. Um, but yeah, I think some people aesthetically are like giant robots. Hell yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I think like build it, it has done some of that. I would say that, um, the Chibi Gundam series have, has had contributed some to that, uh, to the, uh, to people just like being cool with like not investigating Gundam and just surface level. And sometimes it's people who are just like, I, I don't really watch the shows, but I like model kit building and Bandai does great job, great work model kit building. So I built, so I buy model kits that they built. And I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but it is kind of sometimes silly in my opinion anyway, uh, when you're like, Oh no, that's not, that's not what we meant. Oh, there. Um, like a friend of mine, this was a sometime last year. I, I got in a Twitter uh, conversation with with someone and mentioned how um, uh, uh, last year a friend like balked at me when I referred to the pilots from Iron Blooded Orphans as child soldiers, which is what they are. And I think sometimes we're like. You know, the original Gundam series aired on uh, Toonami and didn't finish its initial run because of September 11th. Because then people were like, oh, let's not show the gun. Let's not show these this colony battles anymore. And they would have done the same thing with Gundam Wing, which as people seem to sometimes people forget and that's okay it's okay it happens but sometimes people like forget that uh that all the Gundam pilots like abandoned their colonies demands uh to be terrorists I mean they were terrorists but they were basically ordered to like just detonate cities and they were like no and instead they went after military uh installations uh gundam also has name recognition in the 90s i think a lot of people like those tweets because it's a i know that yeah i mean like they've seen like the tweets of the hello kitty gundam and they're like oh i know what that is oh that's a you know like sometimes it is like oh that's a funny idea and i don't disagree that it's not a funny idea i do think that it is funny but i also think that a lot of times people uh look at uh they look at how cool a thing is and don't investigate it at all it's very surface level and that that's true with a lot of fandoms right like there there are people who unironically do not see the politics of metal gear solid and while obviously metal gear is unbelievable nonsense unquestionable nonsense it's also definitely political god damn it but you know some folks aren't interested in engaging that part of of the of themselves and it's hard to be like wait what okay and part of that is Gundam, you know. People sometimes see what they want to see uh, and don't always it just make the decision that, well, I'm not going to think about that. I'm just going to like the things I like and not think about why I like them or what they might mean or symbol. What's symbolism, right? Eh, it's not It's not the... Uh, you know, it's nothing new. 
people that just like a thing. Uh, it's just a story about a guy and his horse having a good time with weather balloons in, in the savannah. Yeah! Oh, yeah. I mean, I will say that that series doesn't even recognize its own, the core idea of kidnapping soldiers to radicalize them to your cause. It really gets brushed over because it's a fun mechanic of recruiting new people. Who never ever, there's never a moment in uh, in that Metal Gear where someone's just like, yeah, I don't know why, I don't, how did I end up here again? What happened? Did I get knocked unconscious and kidnapped? Whatever. Yeah. It's just, uh, there's a lot of, the, 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 uh, I also think that like, you know, as I've gotten older, I've started to recognize some things that I certainly didn't necessarily see in the world at the time of, um, at the time. Uh, so, you know, I don't want to discredit people who are kind of coming together on things like, uh, hello, Lord Crash, and welcome. Like, there are people who are like, I don't know why did this series that I love, like, when did it become this other thing? And you're like, oh, it always was that thing. You were just 12 and didn't see it. But it was that thing. So, but you didn't have that experience and you didn't have a way to acknowledge it or you were barely could you could barely read text anyway when you were playing it so to you or it was poorly translated when you first started what reading or watching it so you had no concept that it was telling a story that you now realize was very political uh people want to see themselves in their entertainment they don't want to uh, have to read into it or consider another viewpoint yeah that's definitely true i think some people are open to to those things um and other people certainly aren't. Uh, they they don't see entertainment as more. Uh, uh, they the, the entertainment they're trying to pursue is light, and they're not necessarily interested in something that isn't that. Uh, and they're not looking for things that aren't those things. So when they find something that's a little different, or or realize that the thing they thought they were super into there's more to it, then they sometimes lash out. Uh, because uh, it, at the very least, like, it would be great if people could recognize, oh, I've changed. And not just be like, I can't believe this thing isn't the same as it used to be. And it's like, well, what if it grew? What if you're the one that's different? possible or that things do change and people do evolve and people realize they want to tell different stories than they've told before and they want to go in different directions or they have they have uh their viewpoints have changed it's certainly possible and plausible that that could be true that people could be uh it could be possible that people can grow and change but i don't know you know, I like to think uh, about, uh, give people the opportunity, the possibility of growth. Uh, I will say that in 2020, the only good thing about 2020 is that uh, uh, in sometimes small ways and sometimes large ways, people are... Uh, aren't holding back in some ways. And sometimes that's people showing their whole ass and you have to be like, what the fuck? And sometimes that's people being like, hey, well, I'm going to say the thing I've been wanting to say that was necessary for me to say it. So here we go. Um, and that's been good in a lot of ways. Uh, we're seeing that smallly in uh, in a lot of industries and people talking about their own experiences in newsrooms, specifically uh, black people, uh, 
um, and then largely other uh, marginalized groups as well, certainly, and the intersections of those groups, uh, talking about their own experiences and uh, microaggression, microaggressions and large systemic issues and smaller personal things, uh, and uh, and then uh, the clapbacks have been interesting. Uh, a few, some that were large and some that were small. You know, sometimes people are like, "Oh, it's a good th thing for me to uh, to talk about." Hey, how's it going? Uh, uh, we have a uh, been Bohemian here. What's the build tonight? Well, we finished up a, a mobile suit that we were working on. Um, uh, uh, that I'll show off here. The Eldora Brute. I had been working on this for a while and just finished that off. Is a four-legged mobile suit. Uh, it is evil, and it has been built. Uh, and now we're going to working on the uh, what is it? Empire Dragon Lego set. This is a Ninjago set. Uh, for folks that are unfamiliar with Ninjago, I've built some of it on the stream in the past. Um, uh, the thing that I want to say about these kits is that uh, they are reasonably priced. I mean, you know, things are odd now uh, as far as uh, getting Lego. Uh, with anything like anything else, uh, but they are reasonably priced uh, due to the fact that Ninjago is an internal line from uh, um, from Lego, uh, so they don't have the you know the tax, the Star Wars tax, the license tax that you would find, uh, and they are just cool, sometimes mechanical, often neon-looking uh, Lego sets, and uh, we are nulling all three bags here uh, so that we can get into the build and uh, uh, don't have to stop every time. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, there was a, a few people being like, you know, the the kind of uh, I support so-and-so or we, you know, we, we're, we're, we're here to listen and learn. And then someone's just like, um, hey, did you learn anything from this bullshit that you did that I'm going to talk about now, and other people are going to chime in with their own experiences. It's just like, oh, oh, I don't know. Well, I don't know if they learned from that. I don't know if they saw that. Uh, and, you know, sometimes that's small scale, and sometimes that's large scale. Uh, and one of the things that people need to do, uh, hey, here's the thing, right? Uh, your thing may be very small. It might have been a co-worker. Uh, it may have been some decisions you made. It may have been when you didn't fucking uh, speak out and support people that thought that you would have their back and you didn't. Um, but if the, you know, if the clap comes at you, uh, the thing that I will say, and this is certainly not foolproof by any means, the thing I'll say is, uh, even if you think that you're being uh, mischaracterized, stop for a second before you go to defend yourself and go, fuck. When was this? What was this? What was I like at this time? What was I thinking? And then... You know, I'm not saying, hey, you fucked up in the past. I am saying everybody fucks up. Some are larger than others. Some are huge, huge nonsense things. And sometimes the things are small and weird. Uh, and there are sometimes where we do things that we didn't know hurt people because we didn't think about it. Because we were going about our day, going about our year, going about our whatever. Uh... Because we had some sort of protection around ourselves. For various ways. Either because we didn't think about other people. You know, because we were uh, cluelessly and carelessly. You know, whatever. Uh, people will have to be allowed to make mistakes so that they can grow. But that depends on the events. Uh, totally, Lord Crashington. I think that's that that's true. You know, it's like there's a difference between like... Um, 
you know, like, uh, especially it's, uh, I'm trying to say this right. Um, yeah, sometimes it's, oh, I was, I was not careful in my thoughts and my words and I hurt people and I have to figure out how to make that right or how I can learn from it. And other times it's, oh, at a certain point, I fucked up real bad and people are right. And I need to take my licks on it and figure things out. Um, I will say this. Uh, what you don't do is go. Don't do this. Don't go. Well, everyone's wrong. Uh, and I'm not going to listen to people. Um, a thing that I always uh, remembered. Uh, no, I don't always remember, but okay. So there was a period there uh, where uh, some folks were centering themselves in conversations that didn't need, they didn't need to be the center of the conversation, right? Uh, it would have been helpful if they had amplified, but instead they became the thing. And there was pushback against them uh, for doing that. And the thing that I started to notice was uh, that if you were pushed back by certain by by certain people, good people, if good people were like, hey, what's up? Some of the first people to come to your defense were people that didn't like the folks that were pushing back against you. So let's say that, you know, you're generally supportive. You're in the video game space and you're supportive and whatever. But, yeah, you've kind of centered it. And maybe you said a few things that hurt people. And uh, there's some people who are like, hey. I'm going to need you to fucking think about this. Some of the first people in your ear are going to be people that do not care about you. But they are so starved uh, to have you and they need you on their side that they're totally going to be okay with instantly being like, yeah, 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 I know, I know, whatever. Um, that folks that, that, you a couple months ago might have even said complete and utter horseshit about rightfully are suddenly coming to your defense because they feel the shift has gone over i will say that in the in the case of the person i'm talking about here um he rightfully called out he goes hey some people are mad at me that doesn't mean that i'm that i am pro gamergate now like i'm not to get the fuck out of here, you opportunity to swine. Like, what the fuck? Just because some people are mad at me, get out of here. Uh, and I think that, like, that is uh, bandwagon support. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and sometimes that leads to um, people that, like, I don't know if you were considered a soft boy and suddenly people find out uh, about uh, how you treat folks and how you use your uh, your privilege and your position to uh, manipulate folks and you get called out on that shit and garbage people, people that you said were complete trash that you have no respect for are waiting in open arms for you. I don't know. Maybe they don't actually agree with what you, anything you've ever had to say. They are just happy to have somebody back that they can like what they do. And maybe you need to take a second and go like, oh, I should get better. I should get better. Um, all right. So we got these like cyber ninja people here. They got cool face masks. We're going to put that on. We're going to build this one here um, as we go. Uh, get the our green friend here. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is, that is like a issue that people have to like real, uh, you know, hopefully they will, uh, realize is, is a thing that like fucking happens that sometimes, uh, opportunists are like, Oh, well, people are mad at this person who up until recently I claim to despise, but because people I don't like now I'm mad at them. There we go. Uh, I think of a, a comedian and activist who was found to be uh, a manipulative person who was hurting people 
um, and was it turned out to be a real piece of garbage in the comedy, uh, especially the progressive comedy scene. And then that person ended up on some right wing uh, podcasts. Uh, and it was like, so either you're a, either you were a con artist besides your sexual beliefs uh, or mis, you know issues beliefs that's the wrong word uh, so even if you're awful garbage your manipulation manipulation and garbage either that uh, either all of those beliefs you had before are a lie or you're so looking for acceptance now that you've lost your previous acceptance that you're willing to betray all of your beliefs in order to uh, continue to have support from people. And it's like, either way, fucking sucks. What the hell? Like, there's no good side of that shit. All right. So, we got our green cyber friend here. We put it on this camera because we don't have a green screen going right now. So, we can really show it off. Um, but, yeah. I mean, that stuff has always really just been, like, bothered me. You know, uh, I think that, like, I almost, I, you know, in my opinion, my opinion, just me. This is just my opinion. We're gonna we're gonna put together the these other ones here. We're gonna jump ahead, put these together, and then we'll go back. Um, in my opinion, anyway, this is just me. Just me. Make it say my opinion. Uh, I much prefer the go away for a while, and then put your feet in the water. And be like, can I can I come back to to say stuff I still believe? Uh, are we cool yet? Oh no. Okay, we are not cool yet. All right, great. See y'all later. Uh, I would, in general, prefer that. Because at least that feels like, hey, no, okay. I got a Patreon. Is that, no? I, f I still suck ass? I've never apologized or attempted to make any amends? So I'm out? Okay, bye. Okay, all right, I'm out, bye. At least that, I'm like, all right, well. Fuck. Fuck you, but okay. It, but it is the... always It's always felt like real garbage when people are just like... Oh, well, I'm, I'm a progressive person. And, oh, the my behavior is not unacceptable. Well, fuck all of what I was before. Fuck everything I said I was. I guess I just won't be that person anymore. It's like, well, were you that person to begin with? I don't know. Don't know. It's all messy and shitty, and hopefully people uh, can figure it out. Um, the world of uh, comedy is getting some people that are finally speaking out, uh, which has been awesome. That is still my world, even though there is no live comedy outside of Zoom uh, shows, really, right now. And there's some people doing improv and people figuring it out. But, you know, there's not a lot of comedy right now. Uh, but there have been people who are out there uh, trying to do some work, trying to get some stuff going. And just people being like, all right, well, now let's talk about it. Then we know where you were in it in the first place. Yeah, 100%. Just like, oh, okay. Well, that's your fucking deal. Cool. Enjoy the garbage people that that suddenly support you. The garbage people that viol that that vehemently hated you, but as soon as they find out that you are disliked by people, and they do not care for the reason you are disliked by people, and they are instantly just like on board with your bullshit. Like, cool. Enjoy that. That sounds awful. Cool, cool. Um, I do want to point out that these uh, cyber swords are what appear to be uh, 
video game controllers, which is just a wonderful reuse in the same way that sometimes lightsabers show up in other kits. This is definitely a three button controller. I'll get real close on there. That's someone that they put a sword on, which I appreciate. Hi, Mudon. Yes, uh, it is miserable. You're not wrong. Uh, auto mod. How much you reason? I'll post it. Uh, source code. Yeah. I don't know why that was. Uh, I don't know why that was modded for a second there, <laughs> Mudon. But hi, Mudon. Um, yes, I do think this is pretty cool. Um. I don't, I don't know anything about Ninja Go. I've just built them, so I can't tell you why that there are uh, the Cyber Swords, and I can't tell you why there are um, uh, Asterix makes auto mod catch it as potential wordless. Says Urban. Well, there you go. Uh, that makes sense. Okay. Urban uh, Bohemian, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. That has not come up yet. Generally, Nightbot, Automod, the only thing we get is when people are frantically typing all in caps. Um, my favorite was when we were talking about anime stuff and someone was very excited to talk about the show Fooly Cooly, a.k.a. FLCL, and wrote it like a bunch and got banned, like a, got like a timeout before I could be like, everybody, don't talk about that anime, because they did like come back. And I was just like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry, everybody. I just, I don't want people spit coming in, dropping a bunch of nonsense, and then, you know, leaving. Uh, I was just worried about that. Oh, no. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yes. The all caps. Yeah, because I understand. Sometimes y'all are just excited. You want to talk about things. You got things you want to say. I get that. Uh, but also, I don't want things. Yeah, I haven't watched any of Ninja Go. I just, um, I saw them on Amazon uh, a couple years ago when I started getting back into Lego building as part of this stream. And I was like, what, do you, what, are, these, what are all these dragons? What, what's up with all these dragons? And the people were like, oh yeah, you don't know Ninja Go? That's their line of dragon shit. And I was like, N no, I don't know that. And they are, g oh, the uh, there is a green dragon um, that is just... Beautiful. There's some of the dragons are, um, uh, the blue lightning dragon I think is great too. There's some really pretty designs, and I love the colors. It also, uh, it's their line of dragon shit. Yeah, I, I also, you know, I loved the Nexus uh, stuff that never took off, which was their neon. It was their follow up years later. It was in the 2000s. Um, they attempted to do like cyber or computer. Uh, knights stuff and it was a lot of mechs but, but it had a very like knights of the round table feel and that line didn't do super well which is always a bummer because it looks cool as heck i've been able to build a couple things from that um but yeah uh all right so we got this going here we're gonna uh put this here But yeah, so we're just going to build ourselves a dragon, which is pretty fun. Uh, I don't think we'll finish this up today because we had to null it, but I'll be able to leave this set up basically, and then we'll finish it up on Thursday. Uh, I do want to remind folks that, that um, my next uh, stream is going to be on Wednesday. I am doing a charity stream uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern for Twitch uh, using Twitch Sings. Um, we have, I have done some fundraising and some charity work with Twitch, using Twitch things before, um, because, uh, I just think it's fun. I just think it's fun to sing. Um, uh, I'll put the donation link is, uh, in chat now and I'll mention it later, um, in the pause for the cause, which is coming up in a minute. Um, but yeah, uh, the, uh, let's see. Yeah. The donate link is here. People can donate uh, $15. Uh, if they donate $15, they can pick a song. Um, and the song list is... Uh, gotta do this there. Yeah, there's the song list. Song list is here. Um, and they can pick any song, and I will sing that song. 
If I have I heard it before, have I practiced it? I don't know. We'll find out. That's going to be on Wednesday. And I'll sing whatever. And then if they, they donate $25, um, there will be a list which I have to update because I haven't done it yet uh, where I will duet with myself. And if you've never seen uh, Twitch Sings, it's a karaoke uh, It's karaoke software uh, that, that uh, Twitch uh, uh, basically licensed harmonics to make it. So it's a really well-crafted uh, karaoke. Um, and a thing they did is because it's Twitch and they want you to use the service is you can... Um, uh, grab the song that you uh, want to sing and you can sing part of the song and you upload, you record yourself singing it and upload it. And then people can find that recording and go, oh, I'll duet with this person. That'll be fun. Uh, I'll just do a duet and they'll sing a duet with you. And uh, they don't stop you. Uh, still no dolly on the, on the song list. Yes. Dirty, you're right. But they don't stop you from singing with yourself. So if you want to do a duet with yourself, you can just do that and they don't prevent it. And I don't know how they, I mean, they could. I don't know why they don't. So what I'll do is I'll sing a bunch of, uh, I've never thought of singing myself against my own track. Yeah. So I've done this a bunch. I've, uh, my favorite being I've done Suddenly Seymour from Little Shop of Horrors, uh, the duet with myself, which is very strange. But yeah, you can just do it. So I will, I'm going to record a bunch of songs with duets and then folks donating that much will unlock the ability for me to, to sing the other half. Uh, I was going to say, when we're getting Pat and Pat's version of Islands in the Stream. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's a... That's a classic. Um, yeah, now some songs, uh, every song has a duet version. Some of them are not done particularly well because they are songs that do not, are not meant to have duets. But most of the part, most of the time, they're, they're very well done. Uh, and it's very fun and silly. So I, uh, I look forward to doing that and hopefully raising some money uh, as part of Cypher, okay, Tanya's team. Um, for the National uh, Bail Fund. Uh, one of the uh, cool things about the old National Bail Fund, uh, which is is that uh, it can be used a lot, that money, because sometimes you just got to put money up, uh, and then you go and you see a judge at some point. some point, hopefully, you are arraigned. Uh, and then your charges are dismissed because, in some instances, the police officer didn't actually fill out paperwork or didn't bother to show up because it wasn't about that. Or in other cases, it's a trumped up thing. And people are like, what? No. So, yeah. Uh, but they don't say sorry. They just go, what? No. And that's it. And then that money can be returned because you didn't skip out on bail. And then that money could be reused to help someone else. Uh, their national revolving bail fund is really a useful thing. Yeah. So that money helps people several times over. Um, and it is a, it is also a thing that will be continued to be necessary because folks are not done getting uh, arrested um, consistently. Uh, and we are seeing that uh, folks are, I'm not saying that Seattle created the idea of tracking protesters down, figuring out trumped up charges when they couldn't get them before and going and visiting them after with their trumped up charges as a show of force to deter other people from continuing to protest. Uh, I'm not saying that Seattle, Seattle created that, but I am saying that other people are listening. Um, and of course, habeas corpus uh, was waived here in New York and they are currently trying to overturn that in New York City but in New York City um, uh, they are blaming the uh, pandemic for uh, because that they have to do a bunch of things uh, arraignments have to happen uh, on on um, uh, uh, via like closed circuit television, basically, in order to protect people. So they're saying, well, that's slowing things down. 
So now we can hold you for more than 24 hours because everything's got slowed down. And it's like, that's not why. Also, if you are so concerned about COVID, perhaps you wouldn't have a bunch of people just all shoved together. And also maybe if the New York City police were interested in, were worried about it, the police officers would wear masks and gloves ever. They don't. They don't. Because it, any number of reasons. Like, the thing that bothers me the most about that is it's not like police officers think that COVID is a conspiracy. They believe it's real. They know that their, some of their fellow officers have died. So they know it's real. They just can't show weakness by wearing a mask. Because it doesn't, you're not tough. As we saw with uh, all of the people uh, who at first just seemed to be garbage white folk uh, at the uh, in the Buffalo arraignment, uh, but turned out to be all police officers, none of whom were wearing masks, and their and their spouses and supporters, uh, none of whom were wearing masks. Uh, I jokingly said, uh, "There's a bunch of you know nonsense going on out there," because of course there is, because uh, people. Uh, believe things that are un impossibly nonsensical. Uh, but, you know, a lot of stories coming around that there are buses of Antifa, which is not, no, they're not, uh, that are coming to your small town to, to take it over. Um, and there was a photo of a bunch of folks, you know, that had formed an armed militia, basically, to protect their town. And none of them were wearing masks except for one member. And the, I was, the thing that struck me was like, there's one guy wearing a mask. And it turns out that was a local photographer that was not part of the m militia. He was just taking photos. And, that, and he was wearing a mask and social distancing. Because I was like, that seems weird. Why is that one guy in a mask? Uh, that's not a paintball mask. Uh... Yeah. Ugh. Imagine being a family that is like, we're just going to go camping. We're going to get away. We're going to go out further out into Washington State. We're going to get out of the city. We're going to we're going to rent an RV and we're going to go camping. And you set out to do this. Uh, you are a unreleased named uh, minority group. And you have decided you're going to go out and get away from the city. And you decide to do that at the end of March. And maybe that's not a great idea. I would say it probably isn't. But you do you. You make your decisions. You live your life. And... Some people see you at a truck stop in rural ass rural Washington State. Uh, and think that you are some sort of evil organization. And then even when people are like, nah, that's a family. That's just a family. People are like, we did it. We did it. That's the other thing, right? So these buses, uh, apparently, not everybody, but some people are like, some people are like, oh, well, they didn't come. And then some folks are like, we showed them. And you're like, sure. You saw, you won. Good job, everybody. You did it. Cool. cool. You showed them. Okay. You scared the one actual black person in your town. And the young people who you know, and you know they're from here, because you know them, because of your small town, you showed them. And that one article did, li literally a guy said, 
Yeah, there weren't many people there. I knew a couple of them. They seemed real scared. They seemed more scared of us than we were scared of them. And it's like, okay, you got you got that far. You got that far. I don't know. I, don't, I can't. I can't expect a lot more. I would love to expect a lot more. I would love, 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 love to expect a lot more. I can't expect a lot more. So I don't know. <sighs> All right, so we're going to put this here. Line this up. Is that lined up right? That looks right. Well, that doesn't look right. Oh, I'm doing it the wrong way. That's why. Anyway, some of this stuff you don't need to hear from me. Um, uh, I have the uh, the the luxury of uh, having a lot of people that I really care about are uh, uh, don't think what's going on right now is bullshit, and that is uh really nice, and that is not a universal thing. Clearly, uh, uh, sure looks like a lot of email. A small, weird pieces to deal with. Oh, yeah, Lord Crashington, there's a lot of tiny little pieces here. So, the knolling process would help with this a lot if I had done this ahead of time and I did the full knoll, where I could be like, here, I'll take these two pieces and I'm going to just cl click it like that. So then I just have, or click them like this. So I just have to look for that piece. Uh, that would make things easier. Uh, and for Thursday, I will have knolled this off screen, uh, off stream, I should say. And that will help. Uh, I also could have just done this one bag at a time, but because it was only 280 something pieces, I was like, oh, I'll just do it all at once. Uh, because I can always just kind of shove them out of my way. I don't really need this workspace until we build again. So I'm just going to double check make sure we're in there. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, and my heart specifically, my heart goes out to lots of people, obviously. Obviously, my heart goes out to so many people. But I do have to take a brief little moment, and it's not just because Brian is here, but it is. Uh, but in general, my heart does go out to uh, uh, my queer friends uh, who were already gearing up for this, for June being fucking pride during COVID, and we're already dealing with that. With the also the background noise of everything else that was going on in their daily lives and their daily struggles. Um, uh, and as I said earlier, uh, the amount of extra work they have to do, uh, for sometimes mel, uh, uh, well-meaning and oftentimes not mel, uh, well-meaning, mel-weaning, well-meaning, uh, folks, uh, the, the emo emotional labor they have to do, um, is, uh, just so rough, uh, Yes, Mel Weening, indeed. Um, but yeah, uh, obviously, uh, you know, uh, you would hope that you wouldn't have to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars to benefit uh, uh, bail projects in order to get a good proper exposure from Twitch. Uh, or that, uh, uh, folks that, you know, like, God, uh, you know, Twitch Rivals, the show Twitch Rivals is like, well, we probably should have someone come on, and it's like, yeah, Xavier Woods, Austin Creed, whatever you want to call him, Austin, uh, it's just like, cool, he's saying what needs to be said, and he's has the passion behind it and he's someone that people won't scoff at immediately if they're if they can take a moment to to at least ponder but god uh i will say um that if you are not in the space 
to uh, to 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 have a pause and to have a, a cry. If that's not in you, then I would say postpone your future engagement with the New Day podcast. Uh, which I'm not saying don't listen to the episode. I'm saying take the time you need because uh, it came up in my feed as I was grocery shopping today and I was not, I had to like stop what I was doing because the raw, honest and earnest emotions of people who I have such a great amount of respect for like really hit me and I you know I was not prepared uh it's important I think the episode is great and totally you know worth your time and attention but it is raw and uh yeah wasn't ready for it it's important but yeah I just wasn't I was like oh this is not the this is not what I needed this I, I should be putting this through my computer speakers as I sit and listen not while I try to decide if I'm going to get liquid eggs or regular eggs uh huh. but yeah um, I'm going to pause here on this thing. We're going to take a pause for the cause, folks. It's past the hour, uh, halfway through the stream. It is time to take a couple moments to talk about ways that you can support the channel if you're interested in doing that. Uh, as always, you are no obligation to do this, but if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to. Uh, if you're a subscriber, you can go to the Bear Cave, the Lego, the site, the moat in the chat. Uh, let the people know. Uh, uh, as always... Uh, uh, being a subscriber is a great way to support the channel either using your Twitch Prime because you linked your Amazon Prime with Twitch uh, or using cash money. Um, you don't have to subscribe. You don't have to do any of the things I'm going to list here. Uh, you know, you don't even have to chat. Uh, if you'd like to come in and engage in the chat, you're more than welcome to. I, it always makes me happy to see folks engaging. But you can also just kick back and have this be a little bit of your entertainment. Uh uh, I'm going to talk about a couple ways you can support the stream if that's your thing. Uh, again, you don't have to. Don't worry about it. Um, I have a Patreon. You can join my Patreon, much like being a subscriber here. Also, gifting subs. We had uh, Dirty gifted a bunch of subs uh, uh, on Saturday, uh, which was rad. Uh, jumped the leaderboard. Bits and coins, always appreciated. Harold uh, ha has uh, donated uh, bits there, right? I'm a scroller. Yes. Uh, at the top of the leaderboard, and that's a way to support this channel if you'd like to. I have a Patreon. There's a $1, a $3, a $5, and a $10 tier. Uh, join one of those if you'd like. You don't have to, but you can. Harold just said you could drop Pat some bits like this. Thank you so much. That's 94 bits from Harold. Thank you very much, my friend. I'm going to hit the old applause there on the soundboard. But yeah, um, I appreciate it very much. Uh, hit that number always means that we're closer to our goal, um, and I very much appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Um, sorry, I got. Oh. Uh, I have a Discord. You can join my Discord if you'd like. You don't have to, but if you want to join my Discord, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to say that up top. People post photos of stuff they're working on. It's nice. It's chill. Uh, it's a nice little place on the internet. That's what I'm trying to do. Carve out some nice places. Um, hey, if you were like, I would love if you use some of the money I'm sending you to buy model kits to build. I'll do that if you want. Uh, you could send me uh, something from Coffee, Streamlabs. It'll appear uh, as a thing. Um, uh, PayPal. Those are ways to support me if you're so if you're so interested in doing that. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba, okay, uh, we did that. We did it with that. We did that. Um, uh, let's see. Um, oh yeah. Uh, I have so I have an Amazon wish list. 
Um, I have adjusted my Amazon wish list address right now because everything is taking forever, right? So the idea is you buy something on that, it gets sent to me, I build it on stream. Well, now everything's taking so much longer than it used to, and I have no idea when anything is going to arrive, that I've set my address to my parents' place in South Carolina. Um, so at the very least, they'll get it. Um, I put a few new things in there that uh, that I hadn't had before. Uh, some 144 scale high grades. Those seem to just be in stock at places. So I have a few more of those, whereas a bunch of stuff on my list is currently unavailable or is for just an absorbent price. Uh, and that's not good. Um, uh so yeah, I have that. Another thing you can do is you can go to USA Gundam store uh, and buy a gift card and you get emailed the code and you send me that code and then I will build something that you send me. Um, or you send me the code and then I will buy something on USA Gundam store. Sorry about that. Uh, messed up my words there. Um, uh, you know, uh, I'll tell you this. If someone wanted to do that, I most likely would pre-order the uh, ultimate Gohan, Teen Gohan in his ultimate form, after the Z sword unlocking of his abilities, uh, is a kit that's coming out this year, and there's a pre-order available on USA Gundam Store, and I would like to build that, because I like building Dragon Ball figures. Um, let's see, uh, what else do I have to say? Oh, I put up a new Pet Bears anime club today. It's about, uh, um, uh, uh, queer shows you might want to check out. Queer anime. And I tried to run the ga the gambit. Uh, I focused on some stuff that is dramatic, but is it sad? I didn't want to just share with you a bunch of sad queer anime. Uh, so, while uh, the Rose Princess in Utsuna, uh, certainly some shit does not go great for her. Overall, it's a pretty positive, cool story. That kind of thing. Uh, some things that are definitely queer. And some things that are just like, here's an anime where it's just like, these are all girls and they're in various forms of in love with each other. And, you know, no one gets married by the end, but ugh, gay show. Uh, so I, I made that today. Uh, I put that out today. And I hope you enjoyed that. Because it's Pride and we're still going to talk about some Pride shit. Um, and then... Uh, if you missed last Wednesday's Bearing the List, uh, I did, uh, I, I, uh, I ranked uh, Toonami stuff. The past three weeks I had been doing ranking of Toonami uh, from different eras. I think this was 2002 to 2004. Um, and uh, yeah, I think those videos turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm going to drink a little water right now. I encourage you to stretch your arms, you know, roll, roll uh, the wrist there, relax a little bit. As we get this ready, and um, uh, I'll get ready to talk about some anime. It's time to talk some anime. And as we get back into our Lego build. Okay. Um, so, uh, Sachibato, President, it's time for battle. They just announced today that episode 11 is going to be delayed. They're pushing it back a week. Uh, and that's a bummer because it's the only show. Uh, oh, uh, Dirty said, give out the old, uh, what's up? Sorry. Uh, plug it with the 60. Uh, so that's 96. Uh, 8484. Yes, I appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much, Dirty, um, for the bits. Appreciate it. We're going to do all the applause there. Uh, whoops. I, that was the wrong thing. This is the applause. Thank you, Dirty. Uh, oh, and you want to hear the gong. All right, folks, if you're new to the channel, my roommate, old roommate left this. It is a decorative gong that he most likely bought for sketch comedy purposes. And now I have this gong, and we're going to hit that gong. So we have a decorative gong that was definitely bought for some sort of sketch, I'm sure. And then also, time for the soundboard. That is the first of the night. You're, yes. <laughs> All right. So, Sachibato, they're going to uh, hold off the last episode, or the second to last episode, which is the only reason, obviously, not obviously. Oh, Lord Crashton also wants to hear that gong. Uh, all right, here's the gong. I'm going to hit that better. I'm going to hit that with my left hand here. 
All right, great. Um, the only reason I'm bummed about that is because there, like, a thing happened at the very end of this episode, and you're like, uh oh. Uh, also, I don't have a lot of anime to watch on uh, Sunday and Monday. I'm down to one show now. Is there another show I could watch that I did that I stopped watching because I was just not interested? Yeah, I could go back to that, but I don't want to go back to that. I didn't like it. Uh, Woodpeck Woodpecker Detectives Agency doesn't. I wasn't interested in it. I didn't like it, so I'm not gonna watch it. Uh, that's that. Um, but what happened to Sachibato, President of Time for Battle? That was just a cute little episode. Uh, we we find out that our secretary, uh, you know, has been in secretary mode. But this episode was definitely about our president and secretary, who were childhood friends maybe reconnecting and realizing what their feelings are for one another. Uh, and they are clearly set up by the other employees. Now, you might remember from last week, a human humanoid-looking monster who can communicate with them joined the crew, and that is still a weird thing that they are just apparently not going to deal with or dwell on at all. They were just like, yeah, she's part of the crew now. Um, there is, there's a moment there where, like, uh, they literally uh, say the phrase friend zone, which, look, I don't like seeing friend zone referenced in my anime, in my, in my fantasy anime. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, just say that he's, like, you know, being too cautious. Also, these employees are saying, hey... We have to help out, otherwise he'll never make a move on his secretary. Forget it's his childhood friend. She is the secretary. They are all employees of this company. I don't care if it's a family-run business. Uh, it's still weird that they're all, like, be playing matchmaker. It's still an odd thing. And maybe not cool, guys. I don't know. I don't know if that's cool. Anyway, it's cute, and it's anime so whatever they go on a mission together they're reminding of old times she's not feeling well he takes care of her it's hinted uh there's a juxtaposition between that and some other stuff going on uh he talks about how his commitment to uh running the family business even even after they find his dad who has gone missing uh that when they find him you know he used to run the company well this our dude is still going to run it. Also, I've talked about Makoto before, our main guy in the show, and how one of the things that's kind of fun is that he has long hair and a ponytail with, like, a ribbon, and that's just odd for... And while I do think it partially that is to make him seem less threatening, uh, because he's not supposed to be an imposing character, uh, he's supposed to be using his smarts uh, to get things done, um, it's still unique and interesting to see a character like that. Um... It's a pleasant, it's a pleasant surprise to see that, see a character uh, have that kind of uh, uh, style. All right, we're looking for another one of these here. Gotta find what we need. Uh, so yeah. Uh, also, at the end of the episode, it looks like some shenanigans are happening. Some things are going on. They're gonna have to. Get into, uh, to get some work done, and, uh, uh, and we're going to get into episode 11 and 12 to finish off the series. Of course, we're going to be delayed for a week, and that's okay. Um, let's see. And then, uh, I've been doing a thing where I hit the random button on Crunchyroll, because that makes things easier for me when I don't have the normal stuff. Now, normally, this is hap this happens at the end of the season, when some shows have ended and new stuff hasn't started yet, you end up with like only a couple things, and then I just make up for the law, you know, for the my anime talk. Uh, of course, this has been happening now, where it's like I only got the one show to talk about, so I hit random a bunch, and I got Inu Yasha, and I can't tell you the last time I watched the first episode of Inuyasha, especially subtitled, because I watched 
I mean, I watched a lot of it subtitled, but it was definitely a fan sub. It was definitely not an official release. And I watched a lot of it uh, in Yuyasha uh, uh, dubbed. So it was kind of a trip to like watch like the first couple episodes. And hey, weirdly enough, Inuyasha is still a good show on Toonami. Yes, dubbed on Toonami. Uh, dirty. Uh, uh, it's a good voice cast. Um, you know, like, you know, I, I would say sometimes uh, the, like, the gruff, or playing a character who is Sundere, which, in, which Inuyasha is, uh, in many instances, in many ways, the Sundere type. Uh, I don't necessarily think a lot of uh, American and Canadian voice actors, and especially at that time, got that. Like they didn't quite get what, what, what how to play that. Um, and I think that uh, that voice actor definitely did. Uh, his like, his just like exasperation and clear feelings like really shown through. Um, uh, yeah, so I watched a couple episodes subtitle. I watched the first three episodes of that uh, last night, and then I watched two more. I watched, sorry, I watched one last night because I hit the random button last night uh, during my dinner, and then today I hit two more. Uh, and am I going to do a, is this the great Inuyasha rewatch? Probably not, but I'm psyched about it, uh, and I, uh, and I had a good time. I don't know. I don't, I really don't know. Um, there's a chance that um, Kashigoto is only 11 episodes because it made it really seem like this Thursday's episode uh, is the last one. Like they've kind of set it up like it is. Uh, sometimes you don't know, right? Sometimes they, they say, oh, there's been 12 episodes ordered. And sometimes the show just ends and you're like, or you think there are 12 and then they're like a preview for the 13th episode. And you're like, oh, there's 13. Uh, uh, okay, or some shows are just 10 episodes. Like, sometimes anime is just 10 episodes, and you're like, oh, wait, what? Um, I, I remember, you know, like, previous season, the, um, uh, you know, I watched a bunch of that uh, Infinite Dendogram, and they kept delaying it at the end of the year. And I was like, I just want to fucking finish this show. I don't really like this show, but I want to. I'm committed to finishing it. And they just kept adding new episodes to it, or and then and then it ended up being 13 episodes. And I was like, ah, oh, god damn it! I want this to be done. That show is not worth it. I'll say uh, Sachibato to go back to that just for a moment. Sachibato is just perfectly fine. I do think that the episode nine or in the end of episode eight in episode nine, like doesn't really handle the whole, like it's doing a savior complex thing, which I think sucks. And the, there's a lot to explore with the idea of a character who is, um, not, uh, human, but has been somehow changed. And I don't think we're going to get that. I think she's just, <laughs> I mean, my guess is no spoilers. My guess is that she's going to sacrifice herself and fade away at the end of this episode, at the end of episode 12, uh, in a grand gesture where we'll learn something is my guess. And she is the latest character to be introduced. Uh, or she gets kidnapped and that fuels the season two, which they may or may not get. But yeah, uh, that is a perfectly fine show. Uh, there are other shows that I wish, uh, were still continuing production. Uh, or had done enough ahead of time, or were able to do things remotely, um, that I like more than that show. But I don't, I don't hate it. It's just, it would be a show that I kind of like trailed off on. Though I'll say this, right? So there were a few shows that I that I was watching that I can't, that I I decided not to watch. They're still having episodes. So like Princess Reconnect. I did not enjoy that show. The more I've heard about it, uh, so the thing about the anime Princess Reconnect that some people might be fine with that I'm not really super into is the the main idea is that the hero shows up 
And because it's based on a video game, instead of creating a backstory for their hero, they deci their decision was, we'll take a lot of elements from the, uh, um, the uh, video game, and we'll, we'll play around with the video game. And so we'll find some elements of that. Um, and one of the things we'll, we'll do uh, is have this character have like amnesia and no memories of their past. But it just means that the main character barely speaks and doesn't understand anything. And the most important part of the show is introducing all of these princesses, these various female characters. They just keep adding more and more characters that keep joining in. And that's the point of the show. So don't have the guy. Because it's just a weird element. Because he sometimes like powers them up. But they're just like so focused on like, well, we got a, hey, here's a new character. Oh, we got a cat girl now. Oh, we got this. Oh, we got that. Oh, let's introduce this person. This person has a llama head for some reason. And oh, okay. And there's just like a lot of weird shit going on with it. It's a weird show. I don't hate it. I just also don't like it. So I decided I wasn't going to watch it. Uh, and then there's shows like um, Ascendance of a Bookworm. I'm waiting for Ascendance of a Bookworm to finish because the first half of the season, uh, uh, you know, season which I thought was season one, but is now apparently the first part because it just you know, it was a short break. I started watching it and I was like, meh. And then I marathoned it and liked it. I started watching it week to week here. There were at first a bunch of shows that were out on Friday and Saturday. There are less of those now. But even still, I was like, you know what? I don't enjoy watching this week to week. I'm going to wait for it to be uh, over, and then I will go through and marathon all of it. And that's kind of how I'm feeling about it. Oh, um, so that's kind of anime talk right now. There's one thing I did want to bring up on ch on stream. Because uh, I talked about this on Saturday, and I wanted to give a follow-up, because I had a few people reach out and ask me about, about some things. So, on Saturday, I mentioned, uh, somewhat casually, and I haven't like made like a Twitter post about it or anything, um, that I'm going to stop doing my monthly giveaway. Uh, if you didn't know, at the end of every month, I would pick a, ra a subscriber who had not won previously at random, and I would send them... Uh, recently, it's been Lego sets, so they had something to... To, to build. Uh, in the past, it had been um, model kits or Lego sets, and I've sent out quite a few, a bunch. Um, and uh, I am uh, ending that practice. Um, the main reason is because I am moving at the end of this month. And uh, to in order to move, I have to reduce uh, the amount of stuff I have. And so... I have uh, basically my roommate didn't care. I took over the living room. The living room, my living room, was up until very recently just full of boxes, just too much. And I was gonna have to move all that to then eventually send it out. And it was. And the thing is, when I was just building once a week or even twice a week, I didn't have a lot of stuff. But like, I I get high grades that take one stream to build. I'm doing six hours of building a week. I love that. Don't get me wrong. Please don't get me wrong. I love building. But I've built so much stuff that there's things I'll never give away. And there are things that I want to keep. And there are a few things I did keep. But there's other stuff that like, I don't know. Am I going to send you that Optimus Prime kit that I think sucks? No, I'm not going to send somebody that. I think that kit was bad. I'm not going to send that out. And then there's some stuff that I'm like, oh, I, could, I might want to keep this. But I also might want to send it out. Oh, I don't know. And then, like, you know, so um, what I ended up doing was uh, I took all my Lego, except for one Lego set. Uh, that is only good for trolling Vinny Caravella, says Sin. Oh, yeah, just sending somebody like, hey, you know, you build it. Um, well, that's the thing. Uh, it said, uh, first of all, hi, it has been nice to be able to send people some Lego stuff. Like, I, uh, um, my friend Ian won. Uh, pretty recently, and I sent him a Lego set, and he uh, sent it to his nephew, and that's nice. So what I've done is, I took all the Lego except for one kit. Um, I saved 
the uh, uh, wrecking ball, uh, the Overwatch, uh, the hamster wrecking ball, because that thing rules. I'm keeping that. Every other Lego set I have, I took all of it apart into a bu- into a bunch of big boxes uh, that I lined. I lined the boxes with. Um, plastic, uh, like basically big garbage bags, big uh, see-through garbage bags, and then dumped everything in and distributed it among four and a half boxes. And so I'm going to take the fifth, the fifth box into a smaller box, and I'm going to send all of that uh, 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 to Lego uh, Replay. Um, uh, did I say that right? So, yeah. It sometimes I forget if it's Replay or Relay. Uh, wait, where is it? Uh, I have to I literally have to look it up because I'm like I can't remember if it's if it's a replay or relay sorry I'll be back in a, one second <laughs> uh, I'll know the answer in there in one second um, oh I don't know where it went alright but anyway uh, oh there it is yeah the give back box there you go um, give back box uh, has like a Lego thing, um, and uh, uh, give back box started as a way to recycle Amazon uh, packaging uh, to help people out, and then they partnered with Lego to donate Lego bricks, um, and uh, so uh, that's a uh, replay. It's Lego replay. I had to look it up. Sorry, everybody. It's Lego replay. Um, so they're gonna take all of my Lego that I sent them. Uh, that I'm going to be sending them because I have to get all of it to a FedEx, which is going to be a thing, but that's fine because that's what I want to do. And then they will process these pieces. They will clean these pieces and then they will donate these pieces. Uh, and, you know, checked in. It's like, do they want instruction books? No, that that's not what they do. They don't, they don't do that. So I'm happy to do that. I'm excited to do that, to do that. That's going out this week. Um, uh, Lord Crashton, I did see that, that Jason Ostreicher, uh, uh, from Giant Bomb, uh, got a cheese shredder that is a cheese shredder, and at the top, there's shredder from the Ninja Journals. It is a shredder shredder, and that's very good. It's worth checking out Jason's Twitter for a photo of that very silly choice. I hope it's a good cheese shredder because if it's a bad cheese shredder, then you could get hurt. Um, so I hope that it's not just a novelty and is a good cheese shredder. Anyway, um, going forward, Pat Bear going forward, um, uh, the basic decision is that I am going to, I need a good shredder, says Dirty. Hell yeah. Um, I have owned many cheese shredders They were that were sold as shredders. Oh, Sin says, I didn't read this properly. Sin says, I, I have owned many tree cheese smearers that were sold as shredders. It's very good. Very good, Sin. It's a good photo from the Twitter crop to hide the joke. Yes, Lord Gretchen. did a, uh, Jason did a very good job. You gotta click on it. You might just look at it and go like, oh, okay. But yeah, you gotta click. Alright, we're in, we're into bag two, which is cool, because that means we're building this uh, sword in the stone, but for the digital age thing that we're putting together right now, so let's put that together. Um, ever forward, never learning. Indeed. Uh, Washable says, someone in our office taped a picture of the shredder to our paper shredder years ago and it still remains. See, that's a good you know what that is? That's a good office joke. If you don't get it, you're not missing a lot because you can say hey, I don't know what this is. And then someone could be like, oh god, I feel old now. So the shredder and explain it. And the person who sees it who didn't necessarily know what the joke was can look at it and go like, oh okay, fun. That's a good office joke. Uh, I'll never own a shredder as good as the old cowbell shredder my parents had when I was growing up. So yeah, sometimes the old stuff... Look, uh, it is not a... It, it is often called a joke that like, oh, they don't make stuff that lasts anymore. It's not a joke. Uh, 
it, it, a featured ob obsolescence is a thing. Um, but there is an era of American manufacture that was too, too good sounds bad, but it was. Um, uh, at my old, old job, we had this um, dial that we used. It was, it was a, uh, it had mica inside of it. Not even for mica, it had mica inside of it. It was an old giant electric thing that we used to power, uh, um, to crank all of the house lights in the theater and just cranked it on off. It was a giant big thing that hummed. Uh, and it, it fed a lot of power through it. And we tracked the company name and the company name hadn't been a business in 40 years. They worked on battleships and they made stuff and they went out of business because they made stuff that was so good that people didn't ever replace them. The reason why we had to have service on this device, this was years ago, was because it had just caked in with dirt and was sparking because there was dirt in it from just years of use. Uh, and that is, uh, that was an incredible thing. I'm literally going to, I don't care. I'm scratching my back. I don't care. I had, a, I had an itch. Um, so years of use, we had to clean it. And when we called an electrician friend, uh, of the company to be like, hey, do you know how we need to service? It's like, oh, you probably have to open it up and clean it. Hey, what you're describing, I've never seen before. Can I come in and see it? I'll clean it for you. So a guy came and cleaned the thing for free uh, because he wanted to check out our cool dial. Frankenstein. Uh, you may need a tetanus shop if you cut yourself with it, but it worked on everything. Oh, yeah. Let me see that haunted object. Yeah, Sin, he was just like, that's a really old thing. I'm looking at the photos of it online. I want to come see it. And I was like, yes, please. Please come see our fun, weird device. I would love that. All right. So here we go. This is our sword in the stone. I really appreciate the question mark. This is the question mark like block kind of thing. This is a fun, very fun little piece there. Got to pull this legendary sword out, I guess. I don't know. Again, I'm making conjecture. I assume that it is that that this is some sort of legendary item. Uh, all right. So we'll we'll keep building here. We're gonna go uh, till a little before eleven. We will tonight end the stream by um, uh, um, the usual end of our streams, uh, which is we're going to find somebody and we're going to give them a, go a good old-fashioned raid and share the love. Also, because some people stream way later than I do because they start later. Um, I encountered one such object at a California stream, a quiz machine from 1932, says Sin. Uh, it used 8 miller of film and was some in uh, incarnation was gambling... Uh, it looked like it was from Fallout. Oh yeah, is that kind of like? Yeah, the, it it was it was futuristic at its time. It's something like that, like faux futuristic like thing. Uh, when you're like, you know, I I always think about the um the porta things, portomatic uh, food things that at the time people were like, ooh, and you know, when you're running around in Fallout, you're like, okay. Cool. Cool. But yeah, we'll give a raid at the end of the stream. We'll go and find some people to kind of check out and see who what they're up to. Um, I feel bad. Uh, on Saturday, we raided my, uh, my good friend Zandra. Um, uh, the lovely Zandra, Zandra, Zandra. Um, and I wasn't paying attention. I, I ended up getting distracted by other things. And somebody gifted me a sub. To, to Xandra's channel and I don't know who did it and I didn't thank them because I didn't notice it happened. I was like, oh no. Later I got a gift sub to uh, Kathleen from Loading Ready Run uh, because she does a late night Saturday stream. That She starts an hour and a half after we end so I can never um, we can never do a raid of her stream because she does it later because it's her Sunday or Saturday night streams. Um, but that was really good. Good music for Kathleen. Highly recommend it. Um, 
uh, it was for sale, but no. And the company I only found reference very early billboard magazines. Someone would pay out nickels based on how well you answered. It was hard because ancient trivia, but basically full screen slides with five answers. That is wild sin. That idea of like, this is a, we're going to figure out a way to do uh, trivia. Uh, we're going to make a trivia like machine. That's very cool. And also, that's such an awesome thing to bring to California Extreme. Because like, it is such a weird thing that like, people might not know like, how to like, they're like, wh what? Like, people like seeing things like that at these kind of events. Just like having their minds blown by something um, uh, I have been back four times since then it has never been back it must have sold yeah somebody maybe sold it private collection or or the person that had brought it just made the decision that they weren't going to travel to con to California Stream again, or uh, they were like, I can't afford a storage unit anymore, so I can't do this. Hey, I'm selling things on Craigslist, or I've now given myself... That, that, that was the thing. People have said this. This is true. If I can impart you any advice that is not the multitude of times that we've talked about uh, listening to people and talking about Black Lives Matter and all that. Um, if I can impart any other wisdom to you, it is that if a friend of yours has arcade machines or pinball machines or anything like that, you can say that you're interested, but don't ever say you want to start collecting because then they they've got one for you that they don't want anymore oh hey you know what well you should try this out or you should get this or well i have a friend who has to move and they're they're moving to a place that on the third floor and they can't have this machine do you want it or well you know my buddy sells them and restores pinball machines so i can let you know and like they want you in so bad they want you to become one of them so bad they're good people they're not bad people. They are good people, but they're also nightmare people. And they want you in on their in their life and what they're into. That's a never ending world jump to, right? Like Lord Crashton, like uh, uh folks here know Jeff uh um Bacalar from uh from the giant beast cast. Jeff Bacalar, known pinball person. You know what? He could have just had pinball as his hobby. And he still will. I mean, he does stream it and he enjoys it. Uh, but. Holy shit. Uh, now people are coming out of the woodwork being like, hey, do you want this arcade? Hey, I saw this ad. Hey, this person's selling this. Hey, I s refurbish uh, I do whatever. Like, oh my God! Now everyone knows he plays pinball and owns pinball machines. His life is cha been changed forever. It's not good. It's not a good thing. Uh, same thing, yeah, Jeff Gersman. Yeah. Once you start, once you become a person that has arcade machines, the real thing is you can have you can have one. You're not a collector. You're not one of those people. If you have one. Because that's specific, right? If you... It's like, I don't know. I just thought having a uh, Mortal Kombat 2 machine would be rad. Or, I love Street Fighter 2, the newcomers. I'm going to own that. People are like, oh, cool, yeah. But as soon as you're like... You know, also having a Pac, a Ms. Pac-Man ca uh, uh, cocktail cabinet would be neat. Uh-oh. Now you're in it, folks, and you will never be free. Uh, Sin says, holy crap, I found my photo of the thing sending a tweet right now. Uh, that is so weird, Sin. Thank you for sending the tweet. Uh, I'm going to uh, link this in the chat uh, for folks to check out. This tweet, hold on one second, let me get the link here. Uh, why can't I just find the, there it is. 
I clicked the wrong button. Copy link to tweet. Thank you for sending these photos. Sin just sent these photos. Holy shit, this is so weird looking. Uh, amusing, telequiz, educational. Oh, you gotta say it's educational. You gotta say it's educational. Uh, you can't. You can't say that it's for. It's gotta be for educational purposes. You're gonna learn some trivia if you do this. Please do not think that this is gambling, even if it was gambling. Please do not think it was gambling. Please, please, please. All right, so we got our tail here. Um, but yeah, be careful, folks. Uh, a game of skill, because this is the version without payouts. Yeah, they may have gotten in trouble and had to uh, rebrand as an edu edutainment. They probably didn't call it edutainment, but they, had to, they probably had to rebrand. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. And we're going to do this. Then we're going to do this. This. We're going to do this. I'm not sure what we're building right now. That's always the weird thing. Uh, of course, it's a woman with little clothing on it for an educational game. Well, yeah, Lord Crashton, it's educational. It's still got to be sexy. Nah, no, it's probably just a holdover from when it was. Uh, an eye catcher. Hey, guy. Hey, gang. When we say eye catcher, we we don't just mean. Uh, I use that term a lot for like, oh, it's got a visual flair. Oh, it has some sound. It's those things that catch your eye. Literally, eye catchers catch your eye. Um, I'll admit, it was a, I used that term for a very long time before I had the oh moment of going, oh, it's an eye catcher means it catches your eye and your attention. Like I was this years old when I realized that, like it was. A long time using that phrase and not quite understanding what it meant. Um, but yeah, you know, scanning clad lady photo, be like, ooh, what's this? Ooh, trivia. I know trivia. Yeah. Got to do what you can. Sex sells, everybody. All right, well, let me find this last piece here. It is a black piece that goes over. Laid. Nope, 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 fun and easy to apply and they just look good uh i love decals like this we're not here we're not there um clowns and hot ladies are my kink not really uh heck what got me was the slide art of the screen imagine at 250 questions the guts must be magical oh it's a lot of like yes yeah, slides and it's all mechanical and i bet it was a nightmare to service but that's really cool. It's a cool thing. Folks, folks should definitely take a look at that. Uh, those decals look great on the Lego Speed Champion cars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Expansion packs. Of course they did. Oh, I can't believe this quiz machine has paid DLC. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's come. Oh man, you don't get all the questions. You gotta buy more later. Oh, that's an impression of no one who is currently watching. I'm just. I really stuck it to the people who are not any of you. All right, this is gonna go here. All right, the next step is the head. 
Uh, this was the neck. I didn't realize we built the neck. We're going to be building the head on the, on uh, Thursday stream. That'll be the next build stream. Uh, pay to win. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, Ferrari. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. We are going to continue this build uh, on Thursday. But the next stream I have is on Wednesday, folks. And I hope that you can join me. Um, uh, next Wednesday, this coming Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, if you're available, if you can, uh, I am going to be raising funds for the bail project. Um, uh, I worked hard on my overlays. You won't, I'm going to show you this here. You won't see there. Uh, that's, that's going to show that. Uh, so that was just that, but, uh, wait, I'll do this instead. No, I won't do that. Um, I worked hard on the overlay. Uh, um, and I've got notifications turned on. So when you donate, we'll get pop-up notifications. You will, it'll be listed. We'll actually see the numbers increase. I'm going to be singing songs to Twitch Sings this coming uh, uh, Wednesday, starting at 9 p.m. Uh, meager goal, $500. That's reasonable, I think. I'd love to do more than that. If we do $100, okay. If we do $50, okay. If one of y'all donates 15 bucks and picks me a song and makes me sing If I Had a Million Dollars, I'll sing If I Had a Million Dollars. Um, you do not have to donate. You just can come and hang out and watch me sing. I will be duetting with myself, which is a thing you can just fucking do. Uh, it'll be a good time. I hope you come and check that out. Uh Again, we are going to, um, I'm going to quickly find a stream for us to raid because it is going to be time for raiding. Um, Again, we are gonna, uh, I'm gonna quickly I have to mute my own self. Uh, there's a better way to find my followed channels to see who's streaming. There is a better way. I just don't do it. Um, okay. Uh, the very cool... Um, Lunar Jade is, uh, no Natalie and Brulee on the list either. Sorry. Licensing is tough. Uh, it's tough out there. Um, okay. Uh, you know what? Let's go. I don't know what Never Song is. So let's go check out, uh, we're going to go raid Mary Kish and find out what Never Song is. Oh, it looks cool. Immediately it looks cool. So we're going to go give, uh, uh, Mary a raid. Uh, thanks everybody for, for watching the stream. I'm going to, I am going to hit that gong in a second, Lord Crashington. Uh, I hope you can come on Wednesday. If you can't come on Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to keep building this. We'll finish this, uh, kit up. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to start a master kit, a uh, master grade, uh, not master grade. Yeah. Master grade, uh, that I want to build. I'm going to start that on Thursday. Christian's also here. Hi, Christian. I'm going to hit that gong too. Uh, please consider coming with me, along with me on this raid. Hit ready up. Uh, we're going to go raid Mary Kish. Uh, I'll see you all hopefully on Wednesday. If not on Wednesday, I'll see you on Thursday. Thanks so much for hanging out. Have a great rest of your night. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye.